All right, ladies and gentlemen. First thing, I'm just following the process. That's all I'm going to go through. Just going to go through the process. When you guys are doing this, the main important thing is to write your inequalities in standard form. This is written as a compound inequality. So I'm going to separate my compound inequality into two different inequalities. Okay. Then I'm going to solve them for y. So here I need to subtract x on both sides. I have 6 minus x is less than or equal to y. I don't like graphing when y is on the right-hand side, so I'm going to flip everything and write this as y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 6. Please confirm with me that the equations are exactly the same. They're just the reflections of one another. Okay. The next example, um, to solve for y, all I have to do is subtract the x on both sides. Okay. Now, we also have two other inequalities. x is greater than or equal to 3 and y is greater than or equal to 1. Those already have a variable solve for them, so I can go ahead and graph. Now, when Chadford's looking up here with Richard, what they're going to do. So remember graphing, ladies and gentlemen, we want, the reason why I like writing them in, in slope intercept form is so we can identify the y-intercept and identify the slope. Um, in this example, my y-intercept is the coordinate point 0, 6. And my slope is the fraction negative 1 over 1. Right? Now remember, when you're graphing with a negative slope, you can either have the numerator be negative or the denominator be negative. So I'm going to go up to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's going to be my y-intercept. Now, since I know I'm going down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, I'm going to connect the x-axis at 6. Okay. So now you guys can see that's what my line would look like. Down 1 to the right 1. You can now, the next thing we want to do um, when you're looking up here, OK, um, when you're looking up here, is to go ahead and do the shading. So we need to choose a test point for shading. The best test point I would choose would be 0, 0. And simply what you're going to do, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, can you take that back out? I would highly recommend that you be writing this down. So therefore, you're going to plug your points in. 0 is greater than or equal to negative times 0 plus 6. 0 is greater than or equal to negative 6. Is your test point true or false? No, no, take it back out. I'll wait for you. Oh, OK, so you have some other things. OK. So now we can see that this one is going to be test points true, so we're going to shade below. Okay. The next one, y is less than or equal to negative x plus 13. Now I go up to 13, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then again, I'm going to do have the same slope, down 1, over 1. So I know the next x-axis. I could follow down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. But I also know it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They're supposed to look like parallel lines. All right. Now I just need to graph um, x is greater than 3, which is a vertical line. 1, 2, oh, sorry. This, instead of using a test point, I know that y is less than or equal to this, right? Wait a minute. Did I do that right? 0, that's positive 6. That's false. So you shade above. Sorry about that. This one, y is less than, so you're going to shade below. Then we have to graph the line x is greater than 3, 1, 2, 3. So that's a vertical line. x is greater than is going to be going to here. And y is um, less than, greater than 1 is a horizontal line at 1. So you guys can see there's this feasible region. Now, I hear a lot of chitter chatter with backs moving up there. Ladies and gentlemen, there's four coordinate points. What I want you guys to do, just hold on one second. Hold on one second. I'll get you out. Hold on one second. I'll just wait for you guys. The faster I can finish this up, the sooner I'll let you guys out. So what I'd like you guys to do, excuse me, can we please, I don't know why I'm still waiting for this. I'm trying to get you guys out as soon as possible. You guys have these four coordinate points. These are the four coordinate points. Stop moving, please. I don't know why I have to keep on repeating this. You guys have your four coordinate points. Each of these coordinate points has an x and a y. All right. What you're going to do is take these points and plug them into your objective function and find the maximum, which point provides you with the maximum value. Does that make sense? 
Okay? That is what you guys have to do on your homework. Don't leave unless you don't want to get your homework and get it checked off for tomorrow.